which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies. And we start with... It's uh, Bob. Sorry? It's you, Bob. <laughs> it's apple pie tonight. <laughs> Is it? So it's Friday, then? Yes. <laughs> Following advice from Chris Rea, I always crack an egg into my bath. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> we should say for any of the, the younger viewers, some of my fans, who, who Chris Rea. <laughs> Chris Rea was a very popular singer. When did Chris Rea give you this advice, and in what what context? Um, I was making a single for Middlesbrough Football Club's um, FA Cup appearance uh, called Let's, "Let's Dance," which I did with Chris Rea. Mm. And after we'd completed the, the recording, he popped me into the bath and there was an egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's an egg in it. He, he popped you into the bath. <laughs> he said, you, it's been a long day, you must be very tired. Yeah. <laughs> he said, let's just, I'll just pop you into the bath. Yeah. <laughs> so wh where was this bath? Was it? At it, the recording studio. It's on a little island in the middle of the Thames. It's his Rose recording um, yeah. studio. Is. So you've been recording, presumably, in, in a room without a bath. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And then you finish the recording, <laughs> everyone's very happy with the track. Yep. And he says, Bob, you look tired. <laughs> Maybe your joints are aching this way. No, it's not exactly like that. He says, I like that's it, Bob. I think we've got that leg. <laughs> that's your bedroom, that's your bath. Pop the leg in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Geordie? Yeah. He's well, like where I'm from, Middlesbrough. Right. But he's much more Middlesbrough than me, like. <laughs> and why would he put an egg in your bath? Yes. What was the thinking behind it? Um, I've never found out. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done it ever since. All, all I know. <laughs> I woke up the next morning and I have never felt so alive. <laughs> <laughs> was the egg still in its shell, floating, or had he gone... No, the white had dis dissipated. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. It's fabulous, it's fabulous. It's non-greasy, which is a, is a, is a boon, isn't it? Is it, is it non-greasy? Yeah, yeah, honestly. It's, it's less greasy Absolutely. than water without egg in it? <laughs> Do you mix it up or do you just crack it and let it flow? Do you know what? You get in the bath, even in the bath where I am now, and you get in and you don't you really don't want to bust the yolk. So the white goes, but the yolk's there, <laughs> and you move like that. And you try and get it to come <laughs> towards you like that. And I don't know why, but you just do. Have you ever had a get in your mouth? You get in there like that. Have you ever had a get in your mouth? And then you get the yolk, and I, don't, and I use it for, for hair conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> not that much hair, but to condition the hair on my skin. So, just to, going back to the original occasion, uh, Chris Rea had already run you a bath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, mean, I forgot about that detail. <laughs> If you knew Chris, it's just so Chris. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, the other thing it was, is a couple of weeks later, he sent me a gold doily. <laughs> Why? <laughs> to dry yourself off? <laughs> I don't know. But so, I'm just saying, these things are just so Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that the way Bob describes what happened to the egg white... Is that... He says it just dissipates. Is that plausible? If your plausible? bath is hot, then you're going to have a poached white. I'd have thought the white would, yeah, would turn white. And well, you'd no, be no, bits no, of well, white. How hot no, is no. your bath? Your bath is hot enough that an egg could poach Well, I don't know. <laughs> you, your claim is that it dissipates. I'm asking my team whether oh, we right. believe that it would dissipate. Because if, for example, at the temperature of bath, say, 39 degrees Celsius, the white would turn opaque, then your story doesn't check out. Agreed. Yeah, Absolutely agreed. I think... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, David? I, I think it's fair to say that if anyone else had made this allegation about Chris Rea and an egg in their bath, we wouldn't be giving it a moment's consideration. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, coming from Bob, <laughs> it might be true. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I think... You think it's... I think it's true, cos he's, 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 he's been about oh, a bit, Bob. no. 
I, I think the white would poach. Yeah, the, yeah, I think the egg is the The chemical part. analysis of the behaviour of the albumen. <laughs> <laughs> David, honestly, one thing, please don't base it on the album and whitening. It does not happen. It does not. I can't have a bath at 80 plus degrees. <laughs> Is that the temperature at which an egg white will. 80 to, it'll start at about 80, yeah. <laughs> honestly, don't, please don't base it on that. <laughs> what should I base it on, Bob? <laughs> what are you going to say? Instinctively, I believe it. Uh, we're going to go true. You're saying Ooh. true? OK, so, Bob, Chris Rea, <laughs> eggs, <laughs> Bob's, is it the truth or is it a lie? This is awful. <laughs> I was telling a lie. <laughs> He said Chris Rea put an egg in his bath. Of course it's a lie. It's obviously a lie. Who could possibly believe that? It'd be more likely that someone was stuck in a car wash for three hours. Yes, it's a lie. Bob doesn't crack an egg into his bath following advice from Chris Rea. <laughs> Not a lot of people know this. <laughs> <laughs> Including me. <laughs> but I am a qualified dog masseur. <laughs> um, David. OK, first oh, of all, wow. when it comes to dog massage, what is the qualification structure? I've got a B tech. A B tech <laughs> in dog massage. <laughs> and what, what was the process of obtaining that? I went to my local further education college. I admit this was for a television programme. OK. Right? I did a, what was have been a nine-month BTEC, and I did it in three months. What was the television programme? It was a... Well, it didn't happen. <laughs> you don't so tell them it's not true. No, I mean the TV. <laughs> On the thing? I thought you were just giving up. I thought you were just going, oh, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, 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 just, I just had to read this card. I don't know it happened. The television programme never came to fruition. How do you massage a dog? Talk us through it. Well... <laughs> thank you for that, firstly. <laughs> it depends, obviously, what breed it is. Alsatian. An Alsatian? Is it tattooed or just plain? Plain. <laughs> plain. <laughs> what? Tattooed. Since the advent of the devil dogs and that, the Alsatian's lost a lot of its clout, hasn't it? But some of them get tattooed now to up their street, you know. But the owners do it. Oh, this should be so simple. <laughs> if it's not true, Bob, you've made it really tricky for yourself. <laughs> How do you massage your dog? It depends if it's got oh, tattoos. Oh, no, I was just making... I was, I was using that silly idea <laughs> to illustrate that the first thing is you'd have to do is assess the temperament Every dog is different. of the dog. Yeah. Yeah. If the dog has a gentle, kind... Um, soul. soul to it. Mm. You should and must start on the neck, at the nape of the neck, move round to the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> the shoulders. If it's a bit testy, a bit, bit freshly. Do you know, like a little snappy poodle, something yeah. like that. You start on its haunches, because it's weird. You might find this with your cats as well. The, 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 the way... That's a separate course, surely. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing they say in the cat massage BTEC. Now, just because you may have a dog massage BTEC, <laughs> you probably think you know your way around a cat. When you're administering your skills, yes. where is the dog? Is it on the floor? Where, where is it typically? A massage table. It's wiped down, of course. With a hole for its face. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, yeah. this is oh, very um... disrespectful, the way that you're all carrying on to the... <laughs> <laughs> to the b to, to the people who run the b horses. Have you got a dog? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not allowed to keep him. He's barred. <laughs> the first dog I dig it on was a, a golden... Lab, golden retriever? Yeah. Golden fish. <laughs> <laughs> You just separate their back paw 
You, you encourage them onto the side. You separate their back, their, you know, their fingers. I mean, I'm no terminology is not great. Pa yeah. You, why would you know the terminology? Of, <laughs> I mean, you, it was only a three month rush speed test. <laughs> So, knowing that things like, you know, the name for a dog's foot, that's, <laughs> that's advanced stuff. And you can, you can drain the, their equivalent of the lymph system as well. Wow. You can drain their lymph system? <laughs> How? How? Their lymph system, yeah. like ours, <laughs> their lymph system is under their uh, arm. Yeah. I'm not wrong, I know it's not. Is it an arm? <laughs> <laughs> It's a leg. But they've got four legs, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> they're famously got four legs and no Never arms. Never mind complicated stuff like the arms and legs. Let's, yeah. get, let's go back to the basics of the lymphatic system. <laughs> so, David, which, which way is your team leaning here? Oh, I don't God. know. It could be very true, but... The thing is, I really... <laughs> the poor thing. Do you think yeah. it's true? No, no, it's a lie. It's got to be a lie. it's true? It's... No, it's a lie. Well, I think we think it's a lie. What are you basing that on? <laughs> well, I'm basing it on the fact that the three months BTEC for a programme that might not happen, yeah, yeah. and also you don't seem to know much about dog massa. You haven't asked me anything, anything. <laughs> I think we have asked you questions. This is the longest conversation about rubbing a dog I've ever had. <laughs> Let's go lie. OK, Everybody. we'll go lie. You see, it's a lie. I don't think you've thought enough about this. <laughs> Right, Bob, they are saying that it is a lie. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling a lie. <laughs> I once helped Damon Hill to Grand Prix success by <laughs> presenting him with a pre-race snack. David's team. <laughs> well, it certainly tripped off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the snack? A scotch egg. <laughs> and is there a definite correlation between him eating that scotch egg and him being successful? He um, felt that the scotch egg uh, had helped him succeed in the race. He told me so. <laughs> is Damon Hill a close friend, Bob? No, no. <laughs> then why were you giving him food stuff? <laughs> Well, I'd been invited to the Grand Prix. Which Grand Prix? The, the British. In, in, in which year? Think. <laughs> 1996, David, but I'm not willing to exclude four years either side of that. <laughs> Put it this way, it was definitely one of the decades. <laughs> Do you like racing? Then? No, I'm not a, a Formula One fan. Right. I probably uh, prefer soil science. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he driving for? He was driving for one, uh, a company um, <laughs> that had right. very fast company cars. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you permitted access to a major racing driver? Because his manager, yeah. Yeah, Shane Tobacco... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I can't remember his you name. can't remember his name. Shane, uh, or whoever it was, he was also with another bloke, you know, benefiting from hospitality. What was his name? Let's say Top Heavy Ken. Right. <laughs> I remember we went upstairs on the bus, Damon was there, he had a bed in there. Like a sort of Winnebago. Yeah, and it had, you know, mugs with I love cars, I love, <laughs> I love handbrakes, I love headrests. And this is the day of the race. David, this is just like an hour and a half before the an race. An hour and a half before the race. You've turned up an hour and a half early, cos even though you're more into soil science, you want to soak up the atmosphere <laughs> with a good hour and a half of... Yeah. Waiting before the televised traffic begins. Yes. <laughs> so you turn up. The last thing Damon needs before a race is any quiet time. He just <laughs> wants a bit of hubbub <laughs> on his bus. Were there any other people there apart from you and Shane and Damon? I was with my wife as well, yeah. OK. Yeah. And, um... Top heavy can. <laughs> 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 so me and the wife went up. I think when you go to someone's home or their Winnie Bag or whatever, you should... Do you know, like, if you're going to a dinner party at someone's house, you'll always take them a bottle of vinegar? 
Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. So your gift to thank him for the hospitality was a Scotch egg. No. Oh. I call it pocket meat. Whenever I'm out away from, <laughs> whenever I'm away from my house, I have pocket meat. Yeah. And that's what I have, like a chicken leg <laughs> or pork pie. <laughs> And I thought, I've got some pocket meat. It was a Scotch egg in its cellophane. And I said, Damon, we all know that um, if you pop a sausage roll in an American's pocket, it brings him good luck. <laughs> I said, maybe a Scotch egg would work for a British fella like you. Is, and I gave it to him. Is that a thing? Yeah, very what, much. What, that so. if you put meat in, a, in an American's pocket? <laughs> processed Have meat. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> not, not really, no. No. It's all been a bit of a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> Forgotten the original bit of the story. Did he eat said Scotch uh, egg before uh, the race? I, I'll yeah, never yeah. know, Samantha. But after the race, he said that he took the Scotch egg round with him. He swore he did. In the I, car. I don't know whether he put it in the glove box on the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Rob, you're not claiming that he ate the egg. All I say is, is that when I was watching, when, when Damon went past, in his tailwind, a person next to me said, Damon's tailwind smelt really meggy, which, of, <laughs> course, which of course is meat and egg. Meat and egg. Okay. So, what, what are we thinking, Sam? Do you know what? Sometimes stories are so mad that they've got to be true. What I would say here is be wary when it comes to Bob. Oh, OK. <laughs> Do you remember, David, that I think it was the last time Bob was with us, he told us Chris Shreer told him to yeah. put an egg into his bath. I can't even remember. Was mm. that true? No. But you believed it was true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, what are you thinking? Well, I'm... I think that you're sort of somewhat cynically using this as an opportunity to tout your kind of charms. <laughs> and you're hoping to kind of drum up work and then your agent's going to get lots of phone calls saying, well, would Bob Mortimer be able to sort of slip Gareth Bale a pasty and stuff like this? <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie, but you think it's true? I'm on the fence. Oh, dear. This is a horrible situation. I don't know. My instinct is it's a lie. You're saying lie? OK. Yeah. Bob Mortimer. Uh, a lucky Scotch egg for Damon Hill at the British Grand Prix. <laughs> truth or lie? <laughs> I was telling the truth. <laughs> Situation. <laughs> One egg thing's true, the other egg thing. How can I have disbelieved the wrong egg thing? <laughs> so, so obviously, what they'd make up some random thing about an egg and a long departed 90s celebrity. <laughs> Is he dead? He's not, no, he's not dead. He's just, you never hear from him. What does Damon Hill do now? He's probably into soil science. <laughs> <laughs> I recently had to charm a spider out of my shoe by tooting a flute at it. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> um, so, where, where were you? I was at home. So, is this spider a normal British domestic spider? Yes. H how big was it, Bob? It was... It's black, but it's not white. And what colour was it? <laughs> <laughs> It's not the ones that have got a little body and big, long legs. Mm. No, it's, sorry, it wasn't the type with a, with a small body and long legs? Yeah, no. What type was it? it was well, you one... can wear the rest out yourself, surely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big body, small legs. Yeah. <laughs> was this a gerbil? <laughs> no, that's a if bird. If it would a gerbil, I'd have used a loot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> it's actually just a very everyday situation. My wife doesn't like um, spiders, very scared of them, and it's kind of my job to get rid of spiders. I don't like them either. I'm not going to use my hands or whatever. No, you wouldn't. Can like you it. mime the, the blow moment? Don't fall for this. Sorry? He <laughs> <laughs> gets me with this every week. Yeah. Don't fall for it, but... <laughs> I've got just the thing for you if you haven't got a flute. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. <laughs> Did you blow it into the shoe? Yes, I blew down the flute to bring it out into the heel area. Mm -hmm. These were a kind of snakeskin elastic slipper. Yeah. I brought up just under the windowsill, above where the cat litter is. Yeah. I put them there 
because I wanted to get that height and it didn't so come out. So you, I moved, it. This, yes, you I, moved the slipper with the spider in it? I moved it, facing the cupboard where I keep the plates. <laughs> <laughs> there's got, I can't, I mean, it's got little holes in it. <laughs> and the spider emerged. <sighs> so the spider emerged but didn't leave the shoe or slipper? No, didn't leave Did the, the slipper. slipper. Didn't no, leave the slipper? Just... I had a look around <laughs> and went back in. <laughs> Well, so I you were know. no better off, were you? No, no then... I didn't feel like I was better off, but I, I, at least I'd um, found out that we owned a flute as a family. <laughs> if I was scared of spiders, I wouldn't go anywhere near that slipper. I'd just leave it. I would just let... I'm not I... that scared, I'm... I'm... Are you not? Scared I'm of one to ten? I'm ginger about them. OK. Yeah. Ginger? Is that right? A ginger? Is that a word? It is, yeah, That's yeah. a word. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just not sure it's the correct word in that yeah, situation. Yes, it's like you, you pick something up gingerly. gingerly. It's not... It doesn't just mean the flavour ginger. <laughs> a ginger nut is not just a biscuit. It could be a tentative testicle. <laughs> Do you now know who the flute belongs to? Yes, of course, it was my son's flute. Your son, is he a yeah. flautist? No. We hoped he would be. But he could never find the flute. <laughs> 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 well, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm confused by is that if you fear spiders... I do a bit. ..and you believe that there's a spider in this shoe, I think you would be afraid to move the shoe. Yes. Not at all. I also think you would have worried about... As you go to take the breath to blow it, you accidentally breathe in. Yes! Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I don't have to breathe in to breathe out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what, which way are you leaning? It sounds too much like the surreal world of Bob Mortimer to be actually the truth. I think it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie? You think it's a lie? Yeah. No, nobody in the world owns a flute, really, do they? <laughs> <laughs> You think it's a lie? You think it's yeah. a lie? Yeah. Bob, truth or lie? It was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bob. <laughs> I have a possession. Ah, there's a box. <laughs> Take the item out of the box, that's it. Pop it there and then read the card thus. This is the cushion that I used to carry my pet owl around on. <laughs> I would have brought the owl, but he escaped last week. <laughs> Dave's team, what do you think? What, what kind of an owl was it? Oh, yeah. Tawny. Yeah. Tawny. <laughs> Tawny's perched on branches. Yeah. So how did you get it to, to perch on a big, flat, soft cushion? Oh, Steve, it's so good to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> how did I? <laughs> <laughs> is there a problem here, Steve? <laughs> here are the tower marks. I have a rare breeds farm near me, and they had to get rid of a tawny owl that was injured. It couldn't use its wings, and it, I, I shouldn't use the words, it couldn't use its bottom. <laughs> what? For, what? For, for, for doing what? For poo pooing. What, what, and I'm, what did it use? <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> so. As a trustee of the organisation, cos it's just down the road from me, in Warehorn, I agreed to... <laughs> <laughs> I agreed that I would look, look after it. It actually had what you would call a cholestomy bag. <laughs> <laughs> we would call it that. No, you would. We'd call it a colostomy bag. <laughs> <laughs> have I said it? Right? We, yeah, we wouldn't have picked it up, but you did specifically say that's what we would have called it. <laughs> and I, I thought I'd better address this because we really, we really wouldn't. Steve, is an owl's colostomy bag called a cholestomy bag? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, uh, you, it is. You, would, you wouldn't really need it because the, the majority of, of kind of uh, solid fecal matter with an owl comes out of its mouth. Yeah. Mm. No, we're dealing with a very sick owl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I sound aggressive there. <laughs> but I can see. No, he's escaped now, and I can see his little face. We were given a pipette with what was so owl, it, it, owl nourishment. So you had to feed it with a by pipette. pipette. Yes. And, it, and, and how did it stand on the cushion if, as Steve says, it needs a, a perch? It, no, it was fine, just so... Sort of I've like... clearly not made it clear. This is an incredibly <laughs> sick bird. <laughs> you can't judge it, so is it by is it the normal <laughs> tawn. <laughs> so this is just a lump so of sick. meat and feathers. <laughs> It's just hanging on in there. But the thing still escapes. Yes, it escapes. <laughs> I, 
actually, I... I suspect it was killed by my cats. <laughs> Why did this this um, owl sanctuary? When it has a sick owl, why why didn't it look after the owl oh. itself rather than give it to a, a local celebrity? Because I'm a very I'm the cushion and cats. I'm very closely associated with it. The... Sorry, my client would like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You had clearly said that you were going to nurse it back to health. No, that was never going to happen. It's palliative care. <laughs> no, it's palliative care. Palliative care, it palliative was like care a, for the owl. A hospice for the owl. Yeah. For the owl. Oh, right. And we had some oh. decent times. <laughs> Did he have a name, this owl? We, we called it. Uh... <laughs> Did you? You called no. it. <laughs> so are you upset, Bob? I can tell. Yeah. If, you, if you need a minute, it's okay. But what, what did you call what? it? Sorry. What, what did you call it? <laughs> What did we call the owl? Yeah. Well, we called him Mavis. Bob, <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you what did you feed it with the, with the pet? It was uh, it was described to me as as owl, <laughs> as owl nourishment. Everything. You just take bowls and put them in a liquidizer. <laughs> no, just, I, Steve, I still know I can't impress on you. <laughs> the most you got out of it. it uh, <laughs> Lift a lid. <laughs> it wasn't perched and it was reclined on the cushion. <laughs> that, that was its. That's <laughs> its. <laughs> that, that was its deathbed. Yeah. Oh, we, we'd have like a broomstick or something and just hold it. <laughs> and what have you told the owl yeah. sanctuary? What have you told them? Because they must have been upset. Uh, no, I've told them he's passed away, yeah. And they, they, they said, well, that's fine, we knew Mavis was going to die soon. That's why we gave him or her to, to yeah. you, a comedian who lives locally, to keep <laughs> on a cushion in the same room as some cats. So my, my client what? would like to change his name. <laughs> I don't, this, I don't, this isn't sounding... And you're, you're a trustee, did you say, of this charity? Yes. It's a rare breeds farm in Warehorn. Um, <laughs> does family days. Um, sadly, I haven't got an owl at the moment. But... What? <laughs> so, David, what are you thinking? Is this true? Um, no, this isn't true. <laughs> I think you made all that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't believe they would let him bring a dying, tawny owl home. And no, I don't no. think so. I think we're saying it's a lie. I think you but, are. But yeah. and I think that's the, you know, the rare breed centre probably needs to look at its working practices <laughs> if it happens to be true. But OK, Bob, <laughs> truth or lie? I was uh, telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> For five days, I pushed my cat around in a pram because it had sprained three of its ankles. <laughs> David's team. OK, the two key questions here. How did it sprain three of its ankles and why was it necessary for it to be so mobile during its recovery period? <laughs> OK, I'll address those. One of my children, my eldest boy, um, didn't throw a tyre at it, but threw a, a tyre, a car tyre, yeah. and it hit the cat. He threw the tyre recreationally and, <laughs> and the cat got in the way. How did one ankle survive? I... Luckily, he was scratching his head at the time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the tyre hits the cat. Yes. 75% of the cat's ankles are, did you say, sprained? Well, they were bruised. And we were told that he mustn't walk. So he was told he mustn't walk, but, but, he, but he needed still to travel. <laughs> of course he did, yes. It was my younger boy's buggy we put him in. It's right. Because like you could strap him in. You could strap the cat into the buggy. <laughs> yeah. How did you strap the cat into the buggy? Using the straps and... <laughs> the only journey he had to make was to the litter tray. <laughs> so we just used to take him from the front room round to the litter tray. Tip Strap him, him in. in. And Strap the him in. Tip him in. Why didn't you just carry him? Oh. <laughs> no. Because he had these bandages round his legs, but he would insist on trying to walk, which we knew would make his ankles worse. You and couldn't stop off. him walking, but you, he would consent to be strapped into a buggy. It's not really a, It's not... When it comes to pets, it's not, not really a matter of consent, David. Never I, use the phrase, when it comes to pets, it's not a matter of consent. <laughs> you can get into all sorts of problems. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Tell us more about this cat. What was its name? Its name was Good Monson. It was a... What? <laughs> what? Never ask Bob the name of anything <laughs> in the story. <laughs> no, we learned nothing. His name's Good Monson. Good Monson. 
Good morning. Monsoon Good. as in the word monsoon no, with monsoon. an O missing. <laughs> yes. Right. Good monsoon. His name's Good Monson. He's a tabby oriental. Why, why Good Monson? Why, why, why? My, yeah, my younger son named him Good Monson. All right. right. David, what are you thinking? What do you think? Oh, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's lying? Yep, lying. You think he's a... Well, this is a superb moment. <laughs> I, uh, unanimity from the team. So, let's say... It's, it's, it's a lie. It's, we'll say it's a lie. Bob, Good Monson. Truth or lie? I am telling <laughs> a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. We got a point.